Welcome to viewers. Today we are here to have an important uh, discussion and with us we have uh, Shri Partho Chaudhary ji who is the Chief General Manager of RBI and Ombudsman of RBI as well. So today we will discuss about certain important points regarding RBI Ombudsman scheme of 2021. But uh, before moving on to that, uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, about the opening statement that what exactly we are going to discuss today. Thank you very much, Priyanka ma'am, and namaskar to all the viewers of Durudarshan. It is indeed a great opportunity and I am thankful for Durudarshan to give me this opportunity of explaining one of the most important uh, features or aspect of RBI, that is the consumer redressal mechanism. On the outset, I want to say that RBI gives a very high importance to the redressal of the complaints of the consumers in financial sector. In that aspect, we also want that the regulated entities, which I will explain later, who are the regulated entities, they should redress the complaint on their own in a prompt and fairly manner. Nevertheless, if they fail to do so, then RBI has come out with a scheme in which the consumers, customers can approach RBI for redressal of their grievances. Now this particular scheme is called Reserve Bank Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. And for the information of everybody, it was launched uh, in November 2021 by our Honorable Prime Minister of India. Now this scheme, why it is called integrated? Because it comprises of three erstwhile schemes. That is the Ombudsman scheme for banks, for non-banking financial companies, and for the digital payment service providers. Coming together, this scheme is now in one platform where any consumer or customer can approach RBI if he is dissatisfied with the resolution of the regulated entity. So, after all this, we did a survey yeah. to know how effective we are. And the survey was conducted by a third party and it shows overall a 60% satisfaction level. Yeah. Now, RBI thought that to increase the reach of our scheme among the common people, there should be a Ombudsman speak curriculum yeah. in which we will use this Duradarshan yes. to reach out to the people, yeah. to the common people at the far corner of the country. Yes. This is a sequel sort of, yeah. of that where we take this opportunity to yeah. reach out to the people. Yes, absolutely. Now, it is work half done yeah. if we cannot reach the people and make them aware. Yeah. So, with this background that it is a combined scheme covering most of the financial sector yes. and making each and every customer of the financial sector accessible to this particular scheme. Yeah. Now I will be very happy to clarify yeah. certain aspects yes, which definitely. you may have yes. for the benefit of the viewers. Absolutely, absolutely, sir. Because I feel that awareness is more important rather yes. than having the facilities and whatever our common people can have. But uh, due to the lack of proper knowledge, uh, they are not getting that. So yes. today is the right time and after the interview, I'm sure uh, our viewers will get the whole scenario clear. So first of all, uh, sir, my question is that, what is RBIOS 2021 and what is the RBI Alternate Grievance Red Risk Framework? Correct. As I have already briefly mentioned, yes, sir. why it is alternate? Yeah. Because RBI expects yeah. that the regulated entities will quickly and fairly resolve the complaints of their customers. Yes. That is the primary. Yeah. Why, if they fail to do so, then RBI comes into the picture yes. as an alternate redressal mechanism. Yeah. That is why we call this as alternate redressal mechanism and not the primary yes. one. Now, what is the scheme? As I have briefly mentioned earlier, that it is a scheme for the common customers to take redressal 
of the deficiency in service among the operators of the financial sector. Yeah. Who are the operators, ma'am? We can say that banks, yeah. non-banking financial companies, in digital payment platform, yeah. the operators, service providers. So these regulated entities are covered under the scheme. Yeah, absolutely so. The next uh, uh, that uh, comes in my mind, is which REs covered under RBIOS 2021? Basically, as I mentioned, yeah. the financial sector uh, performers yeah. or financial sector entities yes. like banks, etc. Yes. They okay. are the they will come under this. Yes. And so what are the advantages and benefits of RBIOS 2021? The biggest advantage is that this is encompassing the entire gamut of the financial services. Yes. The deficiency in the services need not be restricted to those deficiencies which result in financial loss. Yeah. It is beyond that also. Yes. So any deficiency in service which a customer of any financial sector regulated entity is expected to get yeah. and he or she is not getting it, yes. they are free to express their complaints to the regulated entity first yeah. and if not satisfied to RBI. Okay. So Absolutely. there is no per se limitation mm -hmm. of the nature of complaint barring a few <coughs> cases which yeah. we will cover later yes. where those particular type of complaints are outside the purview of this RBI OS okay. 2021. Absolutely. Uh, so where the full document and scheme of RBI OS be found? It is available in our RBI website yeah. and also in another website where the URL is cms.rbi.org.in. Okay. Now, as you are all aware that www.rbi.org.in is our home page and you have the links available there also to go into the specific yeah. web page which yes. I mentioned here. There they will get everything. Full document of the scheme is yes. available. Absolutely easy and handy at home only. Yes, sir. Uh, in what languages can a complaint be filed <coughs> to under RBIOS 2021? As of today, yeah. when anybody is putting the complaint in our portal, yes. it will be in English and Hindi. Okay. However, we have made a facility available mm -hmm. where in the description window, yeah. anybody can paste or copy or type it out the complain in any Indian languages. Okay. So, possible to give in any Indian language, mm -hmm. but the main availability is English and Hindi. Okay, uh, exactly, I didn't get it. Yeah. They have to write there uh, in English, but uh, they can also write in their own language. Yes, I will explain it to you. Ma. Yeah. There are certain protocols to be followed in yeah. giving a complaint in our portal. Okay. That protocol is available in Hindi and English. Okay. However, hmm. if a person wants to put detail of his complaint yes. and the references of the supporting documents in his comfortable regional language, yes. there is a facility of pasting that okay. written document yeah. in regional language okay. in that particular portal. Okay. Very, we will take very care helpful. of that very helpful because yes, it is very important yes, because ordinary people they might not know English or Hindi. Yes. So absolutely it will be helpful. So what is the contact center of RBI and how can it be assessed uh, by complainers? And uh, it is an important question because we have a contact center which has the number 14448. Now this contact center is up 24 by 7 but the persons behind that available centrally yeah. from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on all weekdays except the national holidays. Yeah. I want to also say that this contact center is also available in select uh, regional languages yeah. and I am very happy to share that Oshumia is one of them yeah. and this Oshumia language contact center is available from 9.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. on all weekdays 
except the national holidays. Very good news for all the Assamese people out here. They get all the information in the regional language. So, where are the ombudsmen located? Uh, will I require to approach any specific ombudsman officer uh, for filling a complaint? A very important question, ma'am. Yeah. Now, first of all, let me say that there are 21 ombudsman offices in India. Now, one of the critical factor of this, positive factor of this particular scheme is yeah. you need not have to approach any particular ombudsman. Okay. You can be anywhere in India. Okay. You can file your complaint in our central complaint management system portal. Okay. And it will be allocated to an ombudsman office. Okay. You will get an acknowledgement hmm. and wherever the ombudsman office may be situated, yeah. you will be getting responses from that office. Okay. So, there is no geographical restriction. Okay. Now. So, that is a very, uh, I mean, convenient for anyone. Yes. Previously, there was an issue that a particular ombudsman office you have to approach. Yes, yes. If you are residing in a particular part of the country. Yes. <laughs> After November 2021, it is no longer so. Okay. You can simply lodge your complaint and any com ombudsman office out of the 21 yeah. will take care of that. Absolutely a nice, nice step and that is really helping everyone, I guess. Uh, what are the grounds of complaints, sir, under uh, the RB IOS 2021 and what types of complaints are not covered under this scheme? Right. As I have already said yeah. that from a consumer or customer of banking service, non-banking yeah. service, financial sector is concerned, any deficiency in service can be complained against. Yes. I will start from the other side. Yeah. What is not inside the ombudsman scheme. Okay. So you yeah. can say that the rest of it is within yeah. ombudsman scheme. Yes, scale. yes. There are certain a type of complaints which it was decided will not be covered under this scheme. Okay. One, if the complaint matter is related to something which is sub -judice. Okay. <laughs> if the complaint is against the management of the entity. Okay. If the complaint is not clear, complainant is not clear in its complaint, what exactly is the grievance he has hmm. or what exactly he, the remedy he is looking into. Okay. The other aspect is that a complaint between two regulated entities mm -hmm. that is outside the scheme. Okay. Like this, there are few issues hmm. where we have kept it outside the purview of the ombudsman scheme. For example, if a complaint is already settled hmm. by ombudsman, yeah. the complainant cannot make a further complaint on that. Okay. Apart from <coughs> this, almost everything you can complain of hmm. if you have grievances, okay. you can make a complaint to the ombudsman. But I will earnestly request the viewers that when you are making the complaint to the ombudsman, Make it as clear as possible. Give all the details, all the data, all the supporting document and make it very clear that what is your grievance and what remedy you want. That helps us to go to the regulated entity and ask them what is their point of view. And this also gives a faster result, I guess. Because Absolutely. when you have a clear picture, then... Uh you can come up with uh, the result sooner. Absolutely, ma'am. The clearer the question, yes. the clearer the request for the remedy, yes. the faster is the resolution. Yes, yes, because the problems might be large in quantity yes. and solving people are less probably. Yes, <laughs> yes sir. So one more question that uh, when can one file a complaint before RBI ombudsman? Right. There is a process to be followed. Yeah. As we said that it is an alternate grievance redressal mechanism. Yes, sir. So we expect yeah. that the complainant will first approach the regulated entity. Yes. Within 30 calendar days, yeah. if the complainant has not got any reply yeah. or if he has got a reply mm -hmm. but he is not satisfied with yeah. it, in that case he can approach ombudsman. Okay. There is only one more restriction that from the 30th day hmm. or the date on which he has received a 
reply from the regulated entity and he is not satisfied, yeah. he has to approach ombudsman within one calendar year. Okay, within that particular yes. year. Beyond <coughs> that, it will be sort of time barred hmm. where we will not entertain the complaint. Okay. That is the only restriction. Yes, that is depends only upon the awareness. Yes. If the person is aware, definitely he will complain yes. immediately. Yes. Sir, uh, what are the minimum details required uh, to file a complaint? Very important question, yes, Priyanka. Sir. Yes. Apart from the name, full address of the complainant, yes. it is preferable he gives his email ID hmm. and the mobile number. Yeah. I will tell why mobile number is important. And then the full details of the complaint, okay. full details of the entity hmm. against whom he is making a complaint. Okay. Not only that, whenever he is giving the particular complaint, we always request that the complainant should give all the supporting document so that we understand that what exactly is the extent of his grievances and where exactly he thinks that the RE is not living up to his expectations. So these are the basic things which he has to give in full. And why I mentioned about the mobile number is that Priyanka, this particular system of uh, complaint monitoring, complaint management system has a facility of tracking the complaint that after lodging where it is lying, what action has been taken, for that mobile number is important very, very for important. tracking purposes. Yes, yes. That is why we request everybody to please give full details, specially mention these details, yeah. so that we get a complete picture about the complainants, contacts mm. and also the grievances. Yes, yes, absolutely so. Very, very important point. So, is there any uh, charge or fees uh, while no. someone is doing a complaint? No, madam. No, Priyanka. It is absolutely free of cost and RBI does not charge any amount for lodging complaint, processing complaint at all. I think our viewers are happy because uh, there's nothing comes in free terms. <laughs> so, something RBI is giving in free of cost yes. and uh, they should be aware of it exactly. and they should ask for their own rights. Exactly. So that is why we are sitting here and talking with Partho sir. Uh, so now sir, I would like to know that uh, what happens after a complaint is uh, received by RBI Ombudsman, uh, what are the uh, different ways in which complaints are resolved? Correct. Now first I will say in dif which are the ways mm -hmm. in which a complainant can lodge a complaint. Yes. There are three, four ways. Yeah. But I will start with the most preferred way. Yeah. The most preferred way, Priyanka, is lodging the complaint in the CMS portal. Yeah. Now, when I say that it is very preferred way, hmm. why I am saying that? Yes. It is from the complainant's point of view, hmm. I am saying it is the preferred way. Yeah. The reason is, a few minutes back, you have raised the question that what are the information which RBI should get yes. from a complainant for speedy, effective processing of the complaint. When a complainant is going into our portal and trying to lodge, the portal prompts him yeah. that, look, these are the information you must give. Yeah. Otherwise, I will not allow you to move forward. Yes. That sort of <coughs> ensures yeah, yeah. that the critical information is captured. Yeah. Once the process is over, yeah. then the system, based on certain parameters, accepts the complaint. Yeah. Once the complaint is accepted, hmm. immediate communication goes to the complainant. Okay. So the complainant is fully aware that his complaint has been registered yes. and accepted in the ombudsman. They get the RBI. update. Yes. As so immediately yeah. they get the confirmation. Yes. Then, till the complaint is resolved. Yeah. They can log, they can just go into our that website yeah. using the mobile number, mm -hmm. they can track the complaint. Yes. At what stage it is. Yeah. So CMS portal based complaint registration is yeah. the most preferred one. Yes. However, there are other ways also. Mm -hmm. He can send an email mm -hmm. 
in which he has to give all the necessary particulars. Yes. He can send a letter hmm. in physical form. Okay. That also will be taken care of. Yeah. Put into the CMS system by us. Yes. So to sum it up, I will say three ways basically. Yeah. Registration in CMS portal. Yeah. Sending the complaint with full details and supporting document by email. Yeah. Or give you sending a letter. Yes. Yes. So once these complaints are lodged mm -hmm. and registered, mm -hmm. then we take up the complaint and check whether it is maintainable or not. Okay. Now what do we mean by maintainable? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, yeah. there are certain particular reasons yeah. on which if the complaint comes, yeah. that is outside the purview of the ombudsman scheme. Okay. So we check whether this is one of those cases or not. Okay. If it is not, mm -hmm. then we make it as a maintainable complaint yeah. and we take up this issue with the regulated entity. Okay, sir. We ask the regulated entity, what is your comments on these complaints? Yeah. When we receive that, mm -hmm. our most important effort is to come to a resolution. Yes, absolutely. We want to come to a conclusion, mm -hmm. Priyanka, where the complainant and the regulated entity accepts yes. each other's position yeah. and come to a common platform. Yes, yes. That resolution process is our priority. Yes, yes. Now, if the resolution is not achievable or not achieved, yes. in that case, hmm. based on the responses which we receive hmm. from the regulated entity yes. and also from the complainant, yeah. we try to come to a conclusion hmm. that in the view of the ombudsman, yes. whether there exists hmm. a deficiency of service or not. Okay. If the conclusion is yes, hmm. there is a deficiency of service, hmm. then we ask or direct the regulated entity to compensate. If we consider that no, Yes. There is no deficiency of service. Hmm. In that case, we reject the complaint. Okay. So, my question, next question was that only. Yes. That uh, what are the basis of uh, rejecting a request or a complaint? Very true. Now, there are very few uh, reasons for which we reject the complaint. Yes, sir. Basically, when the ombudsman office hmm. is absolutely sure yes. that the regulated entity hmm. has acted hmm. based on the extant guidelines, regulations, their yes. internal policies, hmm. and to the best of their ability, then hmm. we cannot hold the regulated entity guilty of deficiency yes. of service. Hmm. In that case, we reject the complaint. Okay. Otherwise, hmm. We generally ask the regulated entity mm -hmm. to compensate the complainant. Okay, sir. So, on a specific case, etc., if, as I mentioned, that regulated entity has to satisfy ombudsman office mm -hmm. that they have acted in prudent manner mm -hmm. and as per rules and regulations, okay, sir. then only we will reject the complaint. Otherwise, it is accepted. Yes. Sometimes we also come across complaints which are so-called frivolous in nature. Mm. Then also we have no option but to reject the complaint. Yes, yes. But I want to make it very clear to the viewers that our best effort and most uh, important effort is to come to a conciliatory position through facilitation so that the regulated entity and the complainant mm. both are comfortable at the resolution. Definitely so. So, is there any recourse uh, if uh, somebody gets an uh, unsatisfactory uh, result or something, then is there anything recourseable? Yes. yes. There is an appellate authority. Yes. Now, if the regulated entity or the complainant are not satisfied yeah. with the views or with the decisions conveyed by the ombudsman, yeah. then they can appeal to the appellate mm -hmm. authority. Mm -hmm. Now, the appellate authority mm -hmm. is the executive director of Reserve Bank of India mm -hmm. in charge of the department mm -hmm. 
who is handling the ombudsman scheme yes. that is consumer education and protection department yes now if you may also ask that whether regulated entity can also go for appeal yes individual complainant can also appeal if they are not satisfied with the resolution yes an appellate authority depending on the merit of the case mm -hmm. and after getting in further input if appellate authority so desires mm -hmm. will come to a conclusion mm -hmm. whether the appeal is accepted mm -hmm. or rejected okay sir so these are the factors yeah. sir can a complaint uh, provide feedback on the complaint closed by the rbi ombudsman yes as i said that uh, we have a portal mm -hmm. which i mentioned that it is cms.rbi.org.in yes. yes in that portal we have the complaint lodging button yes we have the complaint tracking button yes and also have the facility to give feedback yes sir whether the complainant is satisfied mm -hmm. whether the complainant has anything to say for improvement of the scheme mm -hmm. so that facility is available and uh, i will request the viewers that please use that facility because we are very keen to know your views about our complaint redressal mechanism yes and uh, my next question is also related to this so that what are the measures taken by rbi for creating awareness mostly a very relevant and very important yes, sir. point yes sir yeah, okay, and i will take some little time on this yes yes absolutely so this scheme success depends on the awareness among the people yes sir who are taking the financial services mm -hmm. so we have multi prone strategy for that yes first strategy is we reach out through our awareness programs mm -hmm. awareness programs we try to go to the village level mm -hmm. where we through camps yes. we want to tell the common people mm -hmm. that there is a scheme like this mm -hmm. these are the facilities available mm -hmm. how to use these facilities we extensively use two booklets yes that is beware hmm. and raju and 40 tip hmm. which is basically a uh, fun based uh, approach yes, to yes. So, uh, inform the people about the uh, caution they should exercise yes. especially in the area of digital banking mm -hmm. we also participate in seminars yeah we also use extensively the media yes through advertisement in paper mm -hmm. through what we are doing yes, now yes yes absolutely sir through all india radio yeah, yeah to reach out to the people yes and recently in november 2022 mm. we had a national awareness program where through the regulated entities mm. we have tried to reach to the maximum uh, penetrating zone yeah where there is we find that the awareness mm. may be slightly lacking yes, so we yes. try to reach those areas yes. during the entire month of month so it is a continuous process yes sir in which we continuously reach out to the people mm. and another very important aspect we encourage the regulated entities yeah to reach out to the their customers yes by putting proper displays in their branches yeah by communicating with their uh, customers hmm. you may be looking into that most of the banks website hmm. will have certain displays yes yes sir certain uh, scrolling certain captions yes yes only to tell the customers of their bank yeah that be cautious but nevertheless be active yes and if still you don't have the satisfaction mm -hmm. you can approach the bank yes. and the ombudsman yes so we give lot of importance on awareness yes sir so uh, one more thing that uh, you you were talking about the awareness so uh, what is the result that uh, is that uh, increasing the complaints rate and all how do you feel that yes we also do a periodical survey of which is called the impact analysis yes yes and the impact analysis is more or less positive yeah further yes we are finding a good increase of complaints yeah 
after we have introduced the integrated ombudsman scheme yeah. and streamlined the process of complaint redressal and the complaint lodging. Yeah. There is an increase of nearly 9% yes. in the complaint. And uh, in the Northeast region, hmm. we are viewing that uh, areas which hmm. are having less number of complaints yeah. are slowly coming into the picture yes. with more complaints. Yes. I think that's a positive impact. Yes, of that, and that's the success of RBI, this particular ombudsman scheme, that is I what guess. We <laughs> hope. Absolutely, sir. So. Uh, so, are there any guidelines issued by RBI, especially uh, for senior citizens? Yes. RBI has specific guidelines for senior citizens in yeah. the form of customer service. Okay, sir. I will look into from the other way around here, hmm. saying that what customer service a senior citizen should get. Yes, yes. And one of the most important aspect of that is doorstep banking. Yes. Facilities for exclusive counters hmm. at the branch level. Yes. Senior citizens are a significant portion of it are pensioners. Yes. Helping the pensioners hmm. in getting their pensions and resolving the problem like that. Yes. And all sorts of help when they physically move into the branches. Yes. That yes. is our intention of telling the banks. Yes. That please be sensitive hmm. and special care should be taken for the benefit of the senior citizen. Yes, sir. We absolutely. have specific guidelines in place yes. for that. Yes, sir. Because somehow they're slow into that process they are getting that uh, information or not, it is also important. Absolutely. And it is the endeavor of Reserve Bank through the regulated entities yes, sir. to give them the most friendly, yes. sympathetic yes. and effective customer service. Yes, yes sir. I hope it is uh, going rightly. So, uh, next uh, I would like to know sir, what are the non-applicable uh, clauses for which no appeal mechanism uh, is available? Right. Ma'am, there are few uh, cases where in certain uh, aspects, those uh, complaints cannot be appealed. Yes. For example, once the both side has agreed hmm. that there is an acceptable resolution. Yes, sir. And this acceptable resolution is accepted by the regulated entity and the complainant. Yes, Then sir. there is no scope for appeal. Yes. Further, when ombudsman is of the view hmm. that yes, the substance of this complaint is not substantial, hmm. there is no deficiency on the part of the regulated entity. Yes. So what did what we do? Hmm. We reject the complaint. Okay, sir. When we reject the complaint, hmm. then it is not appealable. Okay, sir. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yes, it is appealable. Okay. So you can come to the conclusion that mm. resolved complaints yeah. and the complaints where ombudsman office has found no deficiency on the part of the regulated entity, yes, these sir. are non-appealable. Yes, sir. So, absolutely. So, is there any uh, monetary limit on the amount involved uh, in the complaint? Right. There is no monetary limit for the complaint per se. Mm -hmm which can be lodged in ombudsman office. Yes. Sir. However, there is restriction on the part of the ombudsman regarding the compensation that can be given. Yes. So the monetary terms of the compensation per se is 20 lakh. Yes. And for mental harassment, mm -hmm. it is 1 lakh. Okay, sir. But complaint amount per se, there is no restriction. Okay, sir. So one more question that is actually we all face, even I faced once. So if a failed transaction happens, so how to lodge the complaint and uh, do we get uh, the money back? Very important question. Yes. Sir. Which I feel that quite a few people yes, are now yes, facing. Sir. Very that. common problem. Right. RBI is fully aware of the problem. Yes. Sir. So RBI has come out with a very clear guideline. Yes. Sir. Which says the turnaround time. Yes, sir. What is the turnaround time for redressal of a complaint? Now, once you have any transaction which you consider as a failed transaction, yes, sir. you have to 
bring it to the notice of the regulated entity promptly. Yes. Now, if you have done that, yes. then it is the responsibility of the regulated entity yeah. to examine the complaint, hmm. come to the conclusion, yes. and if it is any deficiency on their part, yeah. to refund you yeah. the amount yes. as quickly as possible. Okay, sir. Now, you may also ask that if they don't, yes. then that particular instruction has also given a timeline yes that if you if the regulated entity is not prompt hmm. in giving the refund hmm. then what will be the penalty okay that mm -hmm. also suo moto hmm. the regulated entity has to pay so this is the framework so the penalty uh, to the customer yes okay so along with the amount to be refunded okay so this is a important That's guideline. That's a great uh, information yes. for all of us. Yes, it is a uh, very important uh, guideline on our part. Yes, sir. And uh, we always try to inform the customers. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and also the regulated entity mm -hmm. that these guidelines should be adhered to mm -hmm. properly. Yes, yes, sir. I hope so, sir. It is going like that way. So, what happens to the complaints uh, if the grievance uh, is against an entity regulated by RBI but not covered under the RBI US 2021? <coughs> I said that what are the entities which are regulated by RBI? Yes. Now, if somebody's complaint is against an entity hmm. which is outside the purview of Reserve Bank Integrated Ombudsman Scheme. Yes, sir. We have another setup. Yes, sir. Which is called Customer Education and Protection Cell. Yeah. This cell hmm. is available in 30 RBI offices. Yes. Three zero. Yes. Complainant can lodge the complaint there. Hmm. They will examine it. If they find that, yes, it is against a regulated entity, hmm. which is not under the RBIO scheme, Yes, sir. in that case they will examine the complaint and they will redress the complaint. Okay, so that so is the process. So, yeah. it is complementary to each other. Yes, yes sir, absolutely sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, uh, can a complaint be filled before the RBI ombudsman uh, through a representative? If the person is not doing itself, then… Yes, yeah. there is a facility given mm -hmm. that a person can uh, give an authorization letter yes. through which he can Im request somebody else to file the complaint. Yeah. But only one caveat here yeah. that the authorized person should not act as an advocate. Yes. Except that yeah. anybody can lodge a complaint okay. after taking proper authorization from the person yes. who has actually uh, suffered the loss. Okay, sir. And so, as long as we are talking about uh, lodging the complaint, so what about if somebody wants to withdraw a complaint? Of course, there is a facility. <laughs> yes. Of course. And we also get quite a few cases like that yes. where in the process of resolution, yeah. <laughs> the complainant sometimes realizes that his complaint was not correct. Yes. Or he is satisfied. Yes. And he informs RBI regulated entity yes, sir. that he is so satisfied that he wants to withdraw the complaint itself. Yes. That door is always open. Yes. So, sir, uh, as uh, I have asked uh, many of the questions, one more thing uh, that is coming to my mind as uh, this integrated program has started uh, uh, in 2021. So, it was a COVID period. Almost the COVID was not resolved. 2021 in between COVID. So, how you cope up with uh, that uh, situation? <laughs> Ma'am, one of the biggest advantage of this entire scheme is, yeah. once the complaint is lodged in CMS, yes. it is end-to-end -end electronic. Okay. So, the tracking, the resolution process, hmm. the hmm. communication, hmm. everything is on electronic platform. Yeah. So, the physical interaction is to the minimum. Hmm. So, we were able to achieve this almost same level of efficiency yes. through the 
online meetings, yes. online resolution process, hmm. and online uh, steps to be taken hmm. for coming to the logical conclusion. Hmm. So, we were effective. At the time also. Yes. That's a big uh, shout out for that yes. <laughs> to RBI. Sir, uh, what if the RE does not comply with the decision of the RBI ombudsman or there is a delay in complaints? Right. Now, when we come to a conclusion that it is not resolved, yeah. in that case, we direct the RE yeah. to compensate the mm -hmm. complainant. Mm. Now, if the RE is not promptly abiding by that direction, yes. then the ombudsman has the facility or the right to mm. issue an award. Mm. An award is a sort of directive mm. which RE has to comply mm. unless RE on valid ground mm. goes for an appeal against the award within 30 days. So, Either RE goes for an appeal against the award yes. or the RE has to comply with the award. Mm. There is also another aspect to this award yes. is that the complainant mm. after receiving the information about the award mm. must confirm that he is satisfied with mm. the award. Yes. If he conveys that, then it is binding on the RE to comply with the award. Yes. Very nice. So, I hope that uh, this whole discussion with uh, Shri Partho Chaudhary, sir, uh, Chief General Manager and uh, Ombudsman RBI has already given a lot of uh, enlightenment to our viewers. And I hope that uh, regarding all the uh, queries and all the doubts, whatever our viewers had uh, cleared uh, to some extent. And I hope that uh, it will be beneficial for our viewers. And thank you so much to all our viewers for joining with us. See you uh, some other time. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much.